Okay. Um, welcome once again uh, to the class of the day. Like uh, we discussed in our last class, we started with operating statements, and we we said that uh, uh, operating statements is uh, is a statement that show the operating performance of an organization at a particular uh, period. Okay, it could be a year, it could be biannually, it could be quarterly, depending on the kind of statement that you want to you want to prepare. So, uh, and we said that. There are basically two methods of preparing the income statements. We have a marginal costing approach. We also have absorption costing approach. We said that the um, marginal costing approach is a technique that charge the total variable cost of production to the unit cost of a product. When we talk about total variable cost, which includes direct material cost, direct labor cost, variable overhead, and direct expenses. Those are the four elements of variable cost. Variable cost is also known as uh, direct cost or marginal cost. And we also said that the marginal costing approach is an accounting system whereby the period costs incurred are written off fully from the aggregate contribution, all right? So I, I also said that there are key features of marginal costing technique. The primary feature is the fact that marginal costing is designed principally to aid managerial decision. It is designed for the purpose of supporting management in making managerial decision. Then two, when you want to prepare the income statement or operating statements, in the uh, you, you will need opening and closing stock. Therefore, using marginal costing approach, opening and closing stocks are valued at total variable cost per unit. The total variable cost we are talking about, like I mentioned the other time, you are going to have the direct material, whatever the direct material, then of course you have direct labor, you had it, you have direct expenses, you had it to it, then you are going to have a variable production overhead. The four of them is what make up the total variable cost per unit. So once you have, once you add up all the uh, total variable cost, you are going to multiply with the opening stock. That will give you the value of the opening stock. When you want to determine your closing stock as well, after determining the closing stock in units, you are going to multiply with total variable cost per unit. Therefore, using marginal costing approach, opening and closing stocks are valued at total variable cost per unit. In addition to that, we also said that under marginal costing approach, the fixed production overhead are written off fully from the aggregate contribution, meaning that you don't consider fixed production overhead when you want to determine the unit cost of your product. Rather, that fixed production overhead should form part of your period cost, which you are going to write off fully from the aggregate contribution. And also in addition to that statement, I mentioned the fact that, okay, the fixed production overhead, which you are going to write off from the contribution, from the aggregate contribution, must be calculated on the basis of the budgeted output. Meaning that you don't, when you want to determine your fixed production over, overhead using marginal costing approach, it's not based on the activity level, rather it's based on the budgeted output. Therefore, when I want to calculate my fixed, my fixed production overhead, I will determine, I will go to the question and pick the budgeted output, the budgeted output, then I will multiply with the fixed overhead absorption rate. To get the fixed manufacturing overhead or fixed production overhead, you multiply the budgeted output with the fixed overhead absorption rate. So please note again, your fixed production overhead is not based on the number of units produced under marginal costing approach. Rather, it is based on the budgeted output. All right. Then I also said that using marginal costing approach, overhead absorption is not considered. Marginal costing approach does not make use of uh, overhead absorption, unlike the absorption costing approach 
which recognizes overhead absorption. All right. So those are the key things. Uh, I mentioned more than that, but those are the key things that you are going to need mostly when you want to prepare your income statement. Then after that, I gave you a format which you are going to use to compute your uh to prepare your income statement using marginal costing. Then we also explain, I also explained to you uh the other method, which is the absorption costing approach. So I said that using absorption costing approach, uh, the absorption costing I mean, uh, concepts is a technique that charge the total cost of production to the unit cost of a product. Total cost of production include both variable and fixed production overhead. So when you had the two of them together, for example, I listed about four items here. These four items you are seeing here, so if I want to use uh, absorption costing method, I will need to include fixed production overhead. I will need to include fixed production overhead. Then I will now sum it up. Whatever I have will give you my total cost per unit. Therefore, when I want to determine the unit cost of a product, all the five elements will represent the production cost. Okay, all the five elements you have here will represent the production cost. So, and then we also said that the absorption costing method relies heavily on the uh, on the generally accepted accounting principle gap. All right, just like the same way you prepare your uh, your profit and loss accounts. Okay, so which of course you have to consider gap in the preparation of your. Uh, income statement or pre and uh, PNL account. Now, what are the features? What are the key features of absorption costing approach that we discussed? We said that under absorption costing approach, the fixed production overhead is part of a production cost. The fixed production overhead is part of production cost. That's why you are seeing this FPO as part of our production cost. The fixed production overhead is part of production cost. And then not only that, the fixed provided, uh, the fixed production overhead you are going to use it must be based on the budget on must be based on the number of units produced, unlike the marginal costing approach, whereby the fixed production overhead is written off from the aggregate contribution and it is also based on the budgeted output. But using absorption costing method, the fixed production overhead is part of the production cost and it is based on the actual units produced for that period. And not only that. Using absorption costing approach, we said that opening and closing stocks are valued at total cost per unit. The total cost per unit that you have here is what you are going to use to multiply your number of units, your opening stocks in units and the closing stocks in units. So you multiply your total cost per unit with your opening and closing stock. All right. And that's why we say that using marginal using absorption costing approach, stocks are valued at total cost per unit. Then we also said that under absorption costing technique, uh, overhead absorption is considered. You have to consider whether there is under or over overhead absorption. So all of these things are what we discussed last time. And we, in addition to that, in addition to that, uh. I said that for overhead assumption, overhead assumption costing, we said is this is the process of allocating indirect costs. Indirect costs are just your overhead. Okay. Is the, we said that overhead assumption costing is the process of allocating the indirect costs uh, to uh, a product or service. When you say indirect cost, what we simply means is uh, Costs such as the rent, the electricity, the utilities, even depreciation, insurance premium, all those costs that are fixed in nature. So the process of allocating them to a product or service is what is known as a overhead uh, absorption costing. All right, because those costs cannot be traceable. It is, those costs are not traceable to a particular organization. Say, for example, in an ideal organization. You have different departments or units. We have finance, for example, or accounting. We have uh, marketing, we have production, we have procurement, engineering, whatever the department within the organization. When you incur the when you 
incur your rental cost. You cannot associate it with a particular department within the organization to say, okay, it is the finance department that incur the, the rent expenses. No, you can't say it is marketing expenses that incur the rent, uh, that incur the rent expenses because those costs, including your electricity, okay, insurance, so you cannot trace it to a particular department. And that's why those costs will be incurred then a portion to each department based on the uh, whatever basis the organization has set as a policy. It could be on the, on the basis of a number of employees in, in each department or on the basis of a uh, floor space that each unit within the organization occupies, all right? So uh, then, of course, we now say that the absorption costing method consider that under or over uh, overhead. Now, how do you, we now said if the budgeted overhead is the same thing as the actual overhead, then the overhead is said to be uh, appropriately or uh, correctly absorbed. But in a situation whereby the budgeted overhead and the actual overhead are different, then it means that there could be under or over overhead. So when that happens, you need to make adjustments on your cost of goods sold. Okay, then and thereafter, I demonstrated for you how to do that. I said that when the budgeted output, I said in order to determine whether it is over or under absorbed, I demonstrated it for you that if it is under or under, we are going to pick up the budgeted overhead or budgeted output, however you want to do it, the budgeted overhead, once your budgeted overhead is less than the actual overhead, then this is said to be under. If it is under, what do you do? You are going to less. Once it is, uh, once the difference between budgeted output and the actual out output or budgeted overhead or actual overhead is, uh, uh, once the budgeted is less than the actual, that means it is under. If it is under, you are going to less. But if it is over, if the over is when the budgeted output, okay, the budgeted output or budgeted overhead is greater than the actual overhead. So when this happens, you are going to add it to the cost of goods sold. So whether it is under or over absorbed, what you need to do is to hide is to make the adjustments. You make the adjustments on the cost of goods sold. So these are the things we discussed last time. And then finally, we now said that the operating statements, the operating statement prepared using marginal costing approach and absorption costing approach cannot, pre cannot present the same operating performance. That is the net profit or loss under each of the techniques is going to be different. So what is causing the difference? So we now said that the examiner can ask you to prepare the reconciliation statement or variance analysis between the two methods and just oppose or uh, expand why there is a difference between the two, uh, uh, between, uh, why there is a difference in net profit between the two techniques. And we said that majorly what is causing the difference is because of the different methods of valuing stocks. We said that marginal costing approach value stock using total variable cost per unit, whereas the absorption costing method value stocks using total cost per unit. So that is what is that is the main thing that is causing the the, the, the variance between the two uh, between the net profit of the two techniques. Then for you to reconcile that, what well, all you need to do is to prepare the variance analysis or reconciliation statement. So that will show difference in profits between the two techniques, then difference in stock valuation between the two techniques. Once difference in profits and difference in stock valuation are the same, it means that what you have done is correct, perfectly okay. And I also mentioned that this topic, operating statement, is a self as appraisal kind of uh, topic in that once your reconciliation statement ties that is the difference in profit and difference in stock valuation are equal. You can be rest assured that what you have done is correct. Okay, to a large extent, what you have done is correct. 
So you can just pocket that, move to the next question. All right. So that's what we discussed last time. At this point, we need to uh, have illustrations. Uh, let's quickly go through that. And before that, I would like to hear from you. Please, you can mute yourself. You have any question for me before we start stop solving questions? Right. Yes. Am I being challenged with um, uh, understanding when you have projected overhead greater than the actual overhead? Okay. Are we going to, are we going to add or subtract? Then I'm having, I don't know, I'm shooting the card before the whole day. I'm mixing it up there. Can you please explain just uh, that part one listen? Okay. Of course, that would be. Well, explain when we get when we are solving question, you are going to say, but I know we stand like and briefly I can brief you again. This is what we are saying. Okay. When it when it comes to overhead um absorption costing, we said that the overhead the company incurs in within the organization, overhead indirect costs such as the range electricity, we need to be allocated or apportioned to to a product or service. All right, because you cannot trace it to a particular, I mean, even to a, to, a, to a particular unit within the organization. So if you want to determine, if you want to charge your overhead to a product, of course, the process of doing it is what is referred to provide absorption costing. And we said that once your budgeted overhead is the same thing as your actual overhead, it means that the overhead is appropriately absorbed. However, once, once there is a difference between the budgeted output and the actual output, there may be under or over uh, overhead absorbed. So what that means is that, you know, at the beginning of every year, companies do have a uh, budget. You know, you need to plan ahead of the year, of the, of the coming year. Say, for example, in 2024, you would have planned, say, somewhere in 2023 that, okay, this is how much revenue we are going to generate this year in 20 in the coming year 2024 this is how much rent we are going to incur this is how much electricity we, we are going to incur this is how much salary you are going to so all those expenses you would have budgeted for them so that we represent your uh, total overhead but when you now get to first of january 2024 up to the end of that 2024 you would have the actual overhead incurred May be different from what you budgeted for. In most cases, your actual will be, will be different from the budgeted because of market condition, prevailing market condition, which because your budget is basically is, is based on the estimates. So it's not the actual. Actual may be different from the budgeted. Therefore, once there's a difference in the what you budgeted for and what you actually incur, that there may be under or over overhead uh, absorbed. We now said that what when what you budgeted for the overhead you budgeted for is lower than or less than the actual overhead incurred, then that is under absorbed. That means the overhead is under absorbed. So if the overhead is under absorbed, you are going to less it from the cost of goods sold. That's the adjustment you are going to make. But if the budgeted output or budgeted overhead is higher than the actual overhead that is over absorbed. So if it is over absorbed, you are going to add it to the cost of goods sold. So irrespective of whether it is under or over, you must add it to the, uh, you must adjust, make that adjustment on the cost of goods sold. So that's basically that. But the issue now is that at times, examiner may not give to you the fixed overhead absorption rates. So you may need to calculate the fixed overhead absorption rates yourself because if in the question, in most cases, it is the budgeted output that the examiner will give to you, which of course, that's what you are going to less from the actual output. So you are going to have the difference. So the difference in units multiplied by your fixed overhead absorption rate is what that will give you, whether it is all under or over, which you are going to make the adjustment on the uh, cost of goods sold. So in case, uh, if you are not given the fixed overhead absorption rates, Fixed overhead absorption rate. It is simply the fixed production overhead, the fixed production overhead divided by the budgeted output or the normal capacity. Okay, fixed production overhead divided by the budgeted output. 
So that's what you are going to, uh, that's how you are going to calculate your fixed overhead absorption, absorption rates. Okay, so uh, I believe that's clear. Very clear, sir. All right then. So at this point, uh, is there any other question so that we can move to calculation straight? Okay then. So I will stop sharing this. Uh, let me quickly confirm if my working notes is is set. Okay. I think we can, uh, so uh, I want you to open the question on your hands. Uh, let's quickly go through it together. Okay, let me just uh, represent the question. All right, then. so let's have illustration one. Let me wrap up this. All right, I want to believe you have the question open uh, at your end. So I will read illustration number one. Fernandez Company Limited manufactured face to oil. The standard unit cost of its production are given below. So all these costs are the standard, these are the standard unit costs. The total cost per unit is seven era 30 cover. At normal operating capacity, 200,000 units of products should be manufactured. Variable selling and administrative expenses amount to 50 cobo per unit, and fixed, fixed selling and administrative expenses amount to 75,000 Naira a year. Income taxes at 40% of net income before taxes. Production and sales data for year. 2008 and 2009 in units. In both years, each tower is sold for 10 era 50 cover required. Prepare income statement for the years by A, absorption costing method, variable costing method. C, prepare a reconciliation statement to show why there is a difference, where there's a difference between the result of the two methods. So this is the question. Please, I want you to open the question at your own hand so that I'll be, I want to switch to the working notes. All right? I want to switch to the working notes. Now, whenever you are given a question, the most important thing on that day of your exam, you don't need to start from the body of the question. When you want to solve, always start from the requirements. Once you go to the requirements, you'll be able to see uh, to be able to understand the expectation of the examiner. In this question, I can see clearly where examiner is requesting that I, as a student, should prepare income statement for the years by absorption costing method, variable costing method. Merely looking at that, this should mean that, oh, this is operating statement. So the next thing that should come to my mind is that, okay, now examiner is asking me to prepare income statement. How do I do it? That means I need to prepare income statements using absorption costing method. Do I understand the format? And that's what I was explaining last week that your starting point is for you to understand the format of presenting the income statements using absorption costing method and the marginal costing method. Very, very, very important. Once you are able to, once you are able to master the format, you are cover over 60% of the uh, of the topic. Once you're able to, call, to, 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 to memorize or to master the format, because Examiner is going to mark for you by line item. If you post the line item, if you post more correct line item, then you are going to hand uh, more marks. I mean, as in the uh, I mark, if not 100% of the, of, of the entire 15 marks or 20 marks, all right? Because examiner will mark for you line by line, irrespective of your final answer. That is the bottom line, which is a net profit or loss, okay? And that's why it is important for you to understand the format and then all those key features we, to, we talked about which i explained last week and earlier today as well so you must know them when to value how to value stock 
using the two techniques, how to how to treat the fixed production overhead under the two techniques and all of that, how to treat under or overhead the absorption. All of that, they are the likely things that you are going to face uh, if you have any question on that uh, operating statement. Now, in recent time, ICANN has not tested operating statements apart from the fact that the marginal costing techniques is, is, has a linkage uh, to other topics, which of course, almost every diet you need the print, you need the techniques of uh, marginal costing to to make managerial decision. So quickly, I want to switch to the working notes so that we can solve this question quickly and uh, move to the next one. Okay. Please, are you seeing my working notes? No, sir, I can only see the question. Oh, okay. Now that means I've not changed. So let me change to the working notes. Let me switch to the working notes. Uh, okay, this is... Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So together, let's solve the question. Let's solve the question. Um, well, we want to prepare the income statements using absorption costing method. So the first thing first is for you to design your, your table. When you want to do that, you need to design your table. So the name of this company is Fernandez. So I wouldn't say Fernandez Limited. That's the name of the company. The next thing would be what the examiner asking me to do. The examiner wants, wants me to prepare income statement using marginal costing approach. I would then say, number A, income statements. Using absorption costing uh, method. Please, on the day of your exam, on the day of your exam, don't go and be writing ACM. You are going to be penalized. Don't go and be writing ACM. No. In the first instance, you need to write it out in full, absorption costing method, in brackets, ACM, so that going forward, you can be, re you can be referencing ACM. But if at the fourth instance, you are just writing ACM. What do you mean by ACM? Do you, do you want the examiner to be to be racking his or her brain? And that's why it's important for you to write it out in full. Don't do a vibration where that is not where that is not necessary. Please, it's very important so that you don't lose a valuable mark. One point is more than I mean one mark is more than enough to pass you uh, in ICANN exam. All right. So let's continue. Now, in this question, we have 2008 and 2009. That, that's two periods. So I'm going to design my table to reflect the two periods. I don't know the extents, but for now, I will join in when I get down there. I can also say because my the currency is in Naira, so I can restrict my number to thousands. So that will to save my time. Here I have 2009, 2008, and 2009. 2008, 2009. So I will divide, you know, when you are preparing your income statement, there are two sides to your, to that statement. We have debit and credit side. So the same thing applies there. So divide this into two, debit and credit, debit and credit. I don't need to come and be putting error sign again. I've already saved time by putting it on the tail on the top. So at this point, the first item from the format is the sales value. So we need to go and determine the sales value. Remember, 
when you want to calculate your sales value, you go to the question, what's the number of units sold? The number of units sold multiplied by the selling price will give you the sales value. Therefore, let's go to the question together to go and pick the sales value. According to the last table given to us in the question, we are told that production and sales data for year 2008 and 2019 units Sales for year 2008, 160,000 160, units. So the unit sold in 2008 was 160,000. Therefore, I need to multiply that with the selling price. Therefore, I will bring out my calculator to say uh, 160,000, 160,000 multiplied by 10.5. That will give us 1,680,000. So we go and post. Here I have 1 million 680. Please, somebody should mute. Mute. Mute yourself. Then let's finish 2008 before we move to 2009. Immediately after your sales value, you need to consider the production cost. Now, remember the definition of absorption costing method. We said that absorption costing method is a method that charge the total cost of production to the unit cost of a product. That is both variable and fixed cost of production to the unit cost of a product. So from the formats, the first item is opening stock. And we said that Using absorption costing method, opening stocks are valued at total cost per unit. I will then go to the question, what's the total cost per unit? According to the question, total cost per unit is 7 era 30 cover. 7 era 30 cover is the total cost, both variable and fixed cost per unit. Therefore, Again, I will go to the question, do we have any opening stock? On January, we are now told in this question that inventory on hand, January 2008, at the beginning of January 2008, there was an opening stock of 28,000 units. Therefore, I will multiply 28,000 units with total cost per unit of 7 era 30 cover. Let's see what that will give to us. 28,000 units multiplied by 7 era 30 cover. We got 204,400. 204,400. So this would be on the debit side because it's an expense. So I would then call me 204.4 because our figures are in thousands, are in thousand naira. Therefore, uh, we move to the next one. Here is 7.3. So move to the next one. Immediately after your closing stock, you need to consider the direct material cost. Here I have direct material. How much is direct material per unit? I will go to the question. Any, everything you want to do under the production cost, excluding the opening stock, must be based on the actual unit produced. So must be based on the actual units produced. So in 2008, production for, for the year was 200,000 units. The units produced in 2008 was 200,000. Therefore, you multiply that with direct material per unit. And the direct material per unit is one error, 60 cover. Therefore, I would then say 200,000 units multiplied by one error, 60 cover 1.6. This gave us 320,000 area. So I will go and put it down 320. Here is 320. I will then go back to the question Do we have direct labor? Let's go and check. 
Are we given? Yes, we have direct labor. Direct labor of one era, 50 cover. Again, you multiply that with number of units produced. 200,000 units were produced. Multiply by the direct labor per unit. One era, 50 cover. That gives 300,000. Then I will go and post direct labor. 300,000. I will ask myself again, am I given direct expenses? Let's go back to the question and check if we have direct expenses. Yes, we don't have direct expenses in the question. The next item will be variable production overhead. Yes, we are given variable manufacturing overhead of one era 20 cover. So I will multiply that with 200,000 units. So 200,000 multiplied by 1.2. That produces 240,000. So I will go and post variable manufacturing overhead. 204, sorry, 240,000. 240,000. Next item. Uh, should be fixed manufacturing overhead. And in the question, we are given fixed manufacturing overhead to be three naira per unit. Remember my explanation here, earlier today that using absorption costing method, fixed production overhead is part of production cost. When you want to determine the unit cost of a product using ACM, using absorption costing method, you must include the fixed production overhead. Therefore, I will say fixed manufacturing overhead. So it's three naira and, and 200,000 units were produced. So two, 200,000 units produced multiplied by three naira per unit will give me 600,000 naira. So at this point, I need to add up. So I will then bring out my calculator to add it up. So I have 204.4 plus 320 plus 300 plus 240 plus 600 equal 1664.4. Here is 1664.4. Okay, let me write that. 1664.4. So this is called cost of goods available for sales. The total is called cost of goods available for sales. It is from this cost of goods available for sales that the company is going to make sales. So here is called gas. Cost of goods available for sales. The next item to the next item to be included after cost of goods available for sales will be the closing stocks. So we need to list the closing stock. Remember, stocks are valued at total cost per unit using absorption costing method. So I will then go to the question, I need to go and prepare my closing stock. I need to prepare the closing stock. So let's go and do working down there. Uh, this page should be for absorption. This one should be for marginal costing approach. Then it should be for reconciliation statements. Then this should be for our workings. You see the way I'm doing it on the day of your exam, you need to estimate the pages that will be that will be sufficient for you to answer the main solution, to, 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 to determine your main solution then your walking should be the last thing you are going to do. You don't start with walking. You don't present your work and start with walking. Your walking should be the last thing you are going to do. So that means you need to estimate how many pages will occupy the main solution that you want to do. Then your walking should be in the last one. So here will be my walking. Walking number one. What do I want to do? I want to determine closing stock. I will then say closing stock. So 
So, in the determination of the closing stock, we have 2008. We are going to do for 2008 as well as the 2009. Okay. The first item, when you want to determine your closing stock, you need to consider your opening stock. Plus actual production, actual unit produced, or actual output, whatever you want to call it. Actual output. Then this will give you the total units available. Then after that, you less the unit sold, less unit sold. Then thereafter, you are going to have the closing stock in units. Okay. So if that is the case, I need to plot down the table. This is what we are looking for. Okay, then. So I will then go to the question, what's my opening stock? Based on our calculation earlier on, opening stock is 28,000 units. We are given opening stock of 28,000 units. So I will then say 28,000. Now, the actual unit produced in 2008 was 200,000. Based on what we have in the question, the actual production for year 2008, 200,000 units. So I will go and add. Here will be 200,000. When you add it up to 28,000, that will give you 228. 228,000. Then you need to less units sold. In 2008, how many units were sold? We are told that says for the year 2008, 160,000 units. So you go and less 160,000 units. Here is 160,000. So this will give us difference of 68,000. Meaning that at the end of 2008, December, the unit unsold is 68,000. So now that I have the units unsold of 68,000, I need to value it. Therefore, I will then say valuation. Valuation. We have two periods, 2008. We are going to do for 2008 first. In 2008, we are going to compute for adjuster, uh, uh, absorption costing method. We also compute for marginal costing method. Currently, we are under absorption costing method. Therefore, the value of the closing stock using absorption costing method is the unit is the closing stock in units, which is 68,000 units, multiplied by total cost per unit. Remember, ACM, absorption costing method, value stocks using total cost per unit. And the total cost per unit is 7 error, 30 cover. So I need to multiply. I bring up my calculator to say 68,000. Multiply by 7.3. That produces 496,400. Here is 496,400 naira. Therefore, I will go and post. I will go back up there and post. 496,400 is the closing stock in 2008. Here is 496. Four nine six point four. I will less. Let's draw down the table. Uh, please bear with me. My hands are not straight, <laughs> so you have to manage like that. I'm not using ruler. Point four. Okay. So if closing stock is 496.4, .4, 
Let's minus. I have one six six four point four minus four nine six point four equal one one six eight. Here is one one six eight. This one one six eight is called cost of goods sold or cost of sales. Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Remember what I told you. Immediately after the cost of goods sold, you must consider, you must make adjustments for overhead absorption. So the next thing you are going to do now, immediately after your cost of goods sold, is to consider overhead absorption. So let's go and do our working for overhead absorption. You can't just come here and put under slash over. That's not professional. You need to first of all go and do your working. Your working will tell you whether it is under or over. All right, so let's go and do our working for that. Working number two. Okay. 2008, then I will leave a space for 2009. ACM, MCM. Then I will then do working number two, which is provide absorption. Okay. So I have 2008. I also have 2009. So in 2008, we have budgeted outputs. Budgeted outputs. Remember, in our overhead assumption, we want to compare the budgeted output with the actual outputs. Okay, budgeted output with actual output, whether it will it results in under or over. Uh, let's go back to the question. What, how much was the unit produced? I mean, the unit budgeted for? We are told, according to the question, that at normal operating capacity, at normal operating capacity, 200,000 units of products should be manufactured. So these 200,000 units is the budgeted output. And the actual unit produced in 2008 was 200,000 as well. In that case, in 2008, there will be nothing like under or over absorbed. It means that the overhead is rightly absorbed in 2008 because budgeted is the same thing as actual. So budgeted is 200,000. Then actual output. Is two hundred thousand as well. So this is equal to zero difference. Equal to zero. That's the variance. So in two thousand and eight, nothing to absorb. So let's quickly do for two thousand and nine. Again, it's the same budgeted output for two thousand and eight and two thousand and nine. Therefore, here will be two hundred thousand units budgeted. Then how much is the actual, what's the actual units are produced in 2009? In 2009, we are told that 150,000 units were produced. Therefore, we need to account for that. 150,000. So the difference is 50,000. So this 50,000 is what is called Remember, I said earlier on that if the budgeted output is greater than the actual output, the difference is called over absorption. So this 50 is over absorption. Therefore, once it is positive, once the difference is positive, it is over. If it is over, what do you do? You add it to the cost of goods sold. Now, this 50 is in, is in units. We need to determine the overhead. Therefore, to get the overhead, I would then say, of course, like I mentioned, the budgeted over, over, absorb.
equal to the unit of 50,000 multiplied by the fixed overhead absorption rate of three naira. Remember, in the question, the fixed overhead absorption rate is three naira. That's your fixed cost per unit. Therefore, you multiply that with 150. That will give us, that will produce, uh, sorry, multiply with 50,000 units. That will produce 150,000 naira. Therefore, this 150,000 naira is over absorbed. If it is over absorbed, what do you do? You are going to add it. You add it to the cost of goods sold. You add it to the cost of goods sold. Therefore, let's go back up there. So in 2008, the overhead was rightly uh, absorbed. So no difference. Therefore, but in 2009, we have over absorption. We have over absorption. So that's in 2009. When we get to 2009, we account for that. But in 2008, we are going to put a dash, nothing to, to record. Therefore, let me draw down my line. I don't like the way this line is. It's not straight at all. Let me see if I can do. This is better. Better. Okay. I hope you understand. Please, I'm not using ruler. <laughs> So the difference, 1168, and then we don't have anything for absorption in 2008. Therefore, the 1168 will come here. So 1168 minus the sales value. So the sales value in 2008 was 1680. I'll bring out my calculator. 1680 minus 11. 1168 equal to 512. 512. So this 512 is what is called gross profits. Remember last week I mentioned to you that absorption costing technique makes use of a gross profit, unlike marginal costing techniques that makes use of a contribution. So this is gross, this is called gross profit. Immediately after your gross, uh, gross profit, you must consider non-production cost. You must consider non-production cost. Non-production cost. This non-production cost could be variable or fixed, irrespective. So I will then go back to the question, what are the non-production costs? Any cost that cannot be traced that is not traceable to production are your non-production costs like selling, variable selling and distribution expenses, variable admin expenses, fixed selling and distribution expenses, fixed administrative expenses. All those costs are non-production costs. So let's go back to the question and see if you have any item like that. Yes, in this question, we are told that variable selling and administrative, administrative expenses amount to 50 cover per unit. So variable selling and administrative expenses amount to 50 cover per unit. Then in 2008, how many units were sold? 160,000 units were sold. So we need to multiply 50 cover with 160,000. Therefore, I would then say 160,000 multiplied by 50 cover. 50 cover is the same thing as 0 0.5, which is 80,000 Naira. So our variable selling distribution expenses, variable selling and distribution costs equal to uh, 80,000. Remember our figures are in thousands. I would then go back to the question, is there any other fixed selling and distribution expenses as well? Yes. According to the question, we are told that fixed selling and distribution expenses amount to 75,000 Naira a year. Therefore, I would then call me a fixed selling and distribution cost equal to 75,000. So I will add the two together. 
this will give me 155,000. Therefore, 155,000 minus 512. 512 minus 155 equal. That produces 357,000. Here is 357. This 357 is called profits before tax. That's called profit before tax. I will then go back to the question. Am I given company tax rates? If I'm given company tax rates, I need to come and account for tax. I need to charge tax from this profit before tax. But if there is no profit before tax, sorry, if there is no tax rates, it means that the profit before tax and your net profit are the same. But in the question, I think examiner gave income tax. Uh, yes, according to the question, we are told that income taxes at 40 percent, income taxes at 40 percent of net income before taxes. Therefore, we need to go and account for tax liability. So income taxes. which is 40% of profit before tax. So I will then carry my calculator, 0.4 multiplied by 357, equal 142.8. Here is 142 142.8 minus 357. Minus three five seven. The net profit is two one four point two. Here is two one four point two. That is at the end of uh, two thousand and eight. This represents the net profit. So this net profit is the uh, operating performance of the organization uh, of Fernandez uh, Limited at the end of two thousand and eight. Okay. Let me complete my table. All right. So I will close this. That's it. Okay. So we are done with 2008. Let's go to 2009. Now that you know 2008, 2009 should be very easy for you. So let's do it together. We want to determine sales value. I will then go back to the question. How many units were, were, were sold in 2009? In 2009, 180,000 units were sold. Therefore, I'll bring out my calculator. 180,000 multiplied by 10.5. Selling price per, per unit is 10.5. Okay. 10.5. Uh, equal 1890. nine zero. Zero one eight nine zero cost of production. We need to determine opening stock. So in 2009, the closing stock of 2008 will become opening stock in 2009. Therefore, I will then come here 496.4. 496.4 will become the opening stock. Then, how many units were produced in? 2009, we are told that the actual production for 2009 is 150,000 units. 150,000 units were produced in 2009. Therefore, I need to multiply uh, direct material cost. One era 60 cover multiplied by uh, 150. Okay. 150,000 multiplied by 1.6 equal 240,000. So I will then come here. Here it will be 240. Direct labor cost. According to the question, direct labor cost is one error 50 cover. So one error 50 cover multiplied by 150. 150 multiplied by 1.5 equal. That's 225. Here is 225. Next item, variable manufacturing overhead. So variable manufacturing overhead, according to the question, is uh, 1.2, 1 error 20, 20 cover. Therefore, I will say 
multiply by unit produce of 150,000. That's 180. So here will be 180. Then fixed manufacturing overhead because this is ACM. So the fixed manufacturing overhead is part of production cost. In that case, I would then say, because we produce, how many was the fixed manufacturing overhead per unit? The fixed manufacturing overhead per unit is three naira. Three naira multiplied by 150,000 unit produced will give me 450,000 naira. Therefore, I will come here for 50,000. So add it up. Bring out your calculator, please. Let's do it together. Uh, let me adjust this. So I have 496, 496.4 plus 240 plus 225 plus 180 plus 450 equal 1591.4 1591.4 so after that we need to go and calculate our closing stock we have a working down there that we did in 2008 so let's go and do for 2009 so in 2009 we want to determine closing stock for 2009 in 2008, closing stock is 68,000 units. So at the beginning of 2009, the closing stock of 2008 will become opening stock in 2009. Therefore, I would then say here is 68,000. How many units were produced in 2009? 150,000 units were produced. 150 plus 68,000 will give me 218,000. Okay, so how many units were sold in 2009? Let's go and confirm. 180,000 units were sold in 2009. Therefore, here I will say 180,000. 180,000 minus 218 will give me 38,000. Let's do the working together. Let's do this calculator. 218, 218,000. Minus 180,000. That's 38,000 units. Here will be 38,000 units. So the closing stock in units for 2009 is 38,000. So let's do the valuation. Equal 2009. Yeah. Equal 38,000. Units multiply by seven error 30 cover equal. So bring out your calculator. Let's do it together. 38,000 multiply by 7.3 equal 277400. 277400. Okay, so let's go and post 277400. Closing stock is 277.4. 277.4 minus 1591.4. 1591.4 minus 277.4 equal 1314. One, Three, one, four. So we have determined the overhead absorption, which represents our working number two. Closing stock is working number one. So let's go and pick the overhead assumption we worked down there. I think it's a 150,000 error. Let's go and check. Yes, overhead absorption is 150. Thousand era. You are going to add it to cost of goods sold because it is over. It is over absorbed. The overhead is over absorbed. So you add it to the cost of goods sold. So let's go back there. One fifty thousand. So 
So here is 150,000. 150 plus 1314 will give us 1464. 1464. Therefore, 1464 minus the sales value. Sales value is 1890. 16, sorry, uh, 1890 minus 1464 equal 426. Here is 426. From this, you are going to consider non production cost. So, the non production cost in 2008, sorry, 2009, we are told that 50 cover per unit. So the unit produced the unit sold in 2009 was 180,000. The unit sold in 2009 was 180,000. Therefore, and then uh, variable selling and admin expenses amount to 50 cover. Therefore, 0 0.5 multiplied by 180 will give us 90,000 error. So here will be 90,000. And the fixed selling and distribution expenses remain the same thing as 75. It's flat. Here is 165. Therefore, 165 minus 426 minus 165. So we have 261. Here is 261. 261 multiplied by a tax rate of 40 percent. Multiply by 0.4. Equal 104.4. Here is 104.4 minus 261 minus 261 equal 156.6. 156.6. So that represents the net profit for 2009. So we just completed the uh income statements using absorption costing method. So we do the same thing for marginal costing method, okay? Marginal costing method. Number B, income statements using marginal costing method. Our figures in thousands. Let's divide the table. Here is 2008, 2009. Divide this into two. This also into two. The like you can do this other side too. It's good for you to complete your table. You don't root one side and forget the other, so it has to be complete. Then, um, the first item will be our sales value. Sales value in two thousand uh, in two thousand and eight and two thousand and nine will be the same thing as the absorption. So, which is uh, let's go back there and confirm the sales value in two thousand and eight was one six eighty. 2008, 1680. Here is 1680. Then production costs. Remember, we are using absorption costing method. So the first item here will be our opening stock. So let's be fast a little bit so that we can uh, solve as many questions as possible. So Using marginal costing approach, we said that opening and closing stocks are valued at total variable cost per unit. So let's go and determine total variable cost. According to the question, the total cost is 7 era 30 cover. Therefore, 7 era 30 cover minus 3 nera of fixed cost, that will give us 4 nera 30 cover. Or you say 1.6 plus 1.5 plus 3.1 plus 1.2, that's 4.3. So 4 Naira 30 cobalt is total variable cost per unit. And the units, the opening stock at the beginning of 2008 was 28,000 units. Therefore, I would say 
28,000 units multiply by 4.3 equal that's 120,400. So we come here 120,000.4. Then we are going to have direct material. Direct material is 160 uh, one cup. How many units were produced in 2008? In 2008, we produced 200,000 units. So 200,000 multiplied by three. Of course, we have done the calculation before. So we we'll go to where, what you have in the absorption costing method, which is 320 for direct material. So here I will say 320 direct level. Direct labor equal to um three hundred. Direct labor is three hundred. Variable manufacturing. There is no direct expenses, but we have variable manufacturing overhead, which is a uh, two forty. Let's go and confirm. I think it's 240. Yes, it is. So please use the marginal costing method. Fixed production overhead is not part of production cost. Therefore, you close this. What do you have? Uh, 12400, 120.4. Sorry. 0.4 plus. Uh, 320 plus 540 equal. That's 980.4. Here is 980.4. This is COGAS, cost of goods available for sales. Then you let's close in stock. So let's go and value the closing stock for marginal costing method. Closing stock. For MCM, is the same number of units of 68,000. 68,000 units multiplied by total variable cost per unit of 4 naira 30 cover. What do we get? 68,000 multiplied by 4.3 equal. 292,400. 292,400. Okay, so let's go and post 292.4. Here is 292.4. That's the closing stock. What's the ER to? What's the difference? So minus. 980.4 equal 668. 688 rather. So this this is called cost of goods sold. Now that we have the cost of goods sold, what's next? Because we are using marginal costing method, immediately after the cost of goods sold, you must consider variable non-production cost. Meaning that there are some costs that are variable in nature, but not related to production, like variable selling and distribution expenses, variable admin expenses. All those costs are variable, but not related to production. Therefore, you must add it to your cost of goods sold. So add variable non-production cost. I will then go to the question, do I have any variable non-production cost? Yes, because in the question, I have variable selling and distribution expenses. I have variable selling and then distribution expenses or distribution cost. I think we use the same thing under, yes, 80,000 error. That's 80,000 error we have here. So let's account for that. It's variable but not related to production. So here I will add 80,000. 
we don't there is no other variable cost again that is not related to production so at this point we need to add it together to with the 688 so i would then say 688 plus 80000 that gave me 768 so 768 so 768 minus the sales value so minus one six nine zero. Says value is one sorry one six eight zero. Okay, one six eight zero one six nine zero. Let me confirm. Okay, eight zero. Yeah. So six is one six eight zero. Six eight zero. That's nine one two. Here is nine hundred and twelve. The difference is nine one two. This difference is called contribution. That's contribution. After the contribution, we need to less period cost. Remember the definition. We said that marginal costing approach is an accounting system whereby period costs incurred are written off fully from the aggregate contribution. So your period cost must be less, must be deducted from, from the uh, contribution. So I would then say period cost. Under the period cost, you are going to have fixed manufacturing overhead and any other fixed costs. So here is fixed manufacturing overhead. Remember what I told you, using marginal costing approach, your fixed production overhead is not part of production costs and it is based on the budgeted output because using marginal costing approach, fixed cost are cost that has no sympathy for activity level. What that means is that irrespective of number of units produced, your fixed cost will not change because fixed cost is not based on budget, it's not based on number of units produced, rather it is based on budgeted output. So I will then go back to the question, what is the budgeted output? According to the question, budgeted output is 200,000 units. So 200,000 units multiplied by the fixed overhead assumption rate of three naira will give me 600,000. Therefore, I will go and post 600,000 as my fixed production overhead. Here will be 600,000. After the fixed manufacturing overhead, I need to consider any other fixed cost. Again, there's a fixed cost, there's a fixed selling expenses, there's a fixed selling and distribution expenses of 75,000 naira. So I also need to, we need to account for that. Fixed selling and distribution expenses, 75,000. So add the two together, there's no other cost again. Add the two together, that will give us 675, 675. So 675 minus 912. Minus nine one two. Let me roll the table. Okay. We manage it. All right then. So. Nine one two minus six seventy five equal two thirty seven. Here is two thirty seven. This is called profit before tax. We charge income tax at forty percent of that. So two thirty seven multiplied by Point four equal ninety-eight point four. Here is ninety-eight point four minus two three seven. Sorry, ninety minus two three seven equal one four two point two. Here is one 
four two point two. Let me confirm the answer. Yes, correct. So that's that. So, that's the next profit for two thousand and eight. Net profits. <laughs> Please, you are distracting us. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. You are distracting us. Okay. So let's go and do 2009. We still have a long way to go. We are still on one question since that time. So let's go and do 2009 so that we can do reconciliation statements. So in 2009, the closing stock of 2008 of 292.4 will become opening stock. So here will be 292.4. Then the sales value for 2009 is 1890, according to what we calculated before under ACM. Okay. Then direct material also will be the same thing as ACM. Direct material cost 2009 is 240,225. 240 for direct material, 225 for direct labor. Then variable manufacturing overhead is 180. 180, add it up. Then bring out your calculator to say our 292. 0.4 plus 240 plus 225 plus 180 equal 937.937.4. 937.4. Let's go and value the closing stock. In 2009, closing stock in 2009 for MCM. The unit on sold in 2009 was 38,000 multiplied by 4 naira 30 cover because closing stock will be valued at 4 naira 30 cover using marginal costing method. Therefore, I would then say. 38,000 units multiplied by 4.3 equal 163,400. 163,400. Let's go and post 163.4. Here is 163.4 minus 937.4 minus. 937.4 equal 774. 774. Then after that, we consider variable selling and distribution expenses. In 2009, the variable selling and distribution expenses we computed under MCM was 90,000. That is 50 cover of 180,000 units will give us 90. A uh, thousand naira. Okay, so here will be nine zero. So nine zero plus seven seven four. That's eight sixty four. Here is eight sixty four. Eight sixty four minus one eight nine zero. Was 1890 equal 1026. Here is 1026. Okay, then we less period cost. Remember what I told you using marginal costing approach, fixed manufacturing overhead or fixed production overhead has no sympathy for activity level. That is, the fixed manufacturing overhead will not change because it is based on the budgeted output. It is based on budgeted output. So what that means is that the same fixed manufacturing overhead you incurred in 2008 
is the same thing you are going to incur in 2009, except that if your budgeted output in 2009 changes, if your budgeted output in 2009 change, then your fixed uh, manufacturing overhead will also change. But provided your fixed overhead, sorry, provided your budgeted output is constant, then your fixed manufacturing overhead will also be constant. Therefore, in 2009, the fixed manufacturing overhead remains the same thing as 600,000. Unlike the absorption costing method, whereby your fixed production overhead is based on the is based on the number of units produced. That's why you see that your fixed manufacturing overhead is changing. It's changing as your output increases. Your fixed manufacturing your your fish manufacturing overhead will also increase. If your output reduce, then your fixed manufacturing overhead will also reduce using marginal sorry using absorption costing method. But under marginal costing method, your fixed manufacturing overhead is constant. It will not change irrespective of number of units produced. So in 2009, what's the fixed selling and distribution expenses? Let's go and pick it from the, from the other table there. Fixed selling and distribution is 75,000 error. It's constant. So here is 75,000. So that's 675,000. Okay. So minus 1026. Minus 675. Equal. That's 351. Here yeah, is 351. So what's income tax on that? 40% on 351 multiplied by 0. 0.4. Equal 140.4. 140.4 minus 351 minus 351 equal 210.6 210.6 so we have computed income statements using absorption costing method as well as a marginal costing method so you can see that the net profits produced by marginal costing method and absorption costing method are different. The net profits here is different from the net profits under absorption costing method. And that's why the examiner is asking us in the number C requirement that we should prepare the reconciliation statements to show why there's a difference between the result of the two methods. Therefore, let us prepare the reconciliation statements. Okay, so number C, reconciliation method, sorry, reconciliation statements. So when you want to prepare the reconciliation statement, that's a format I gave to you. In this question, we have two periods. 2008 and then 2009. So you are starting from please. When you want to prepare, when you want to find the difference between um, between the two techniques, the profit you are going to use must be profit before tax, not profit, not net profit. I will repeat: when you want to find difference in profits, it has to be profit before tax. So I will then go to ACM absorption costing method as well as the marginal costing method under absorption costing method what's the difference what's the what's the profit before tax i'll go back to the question in our solution in 2008 profit before tax under absorption costing method is 357 in 2008 in 2009 it was 261 therefore 357 261 Before that, I need to, let me see, I need to divide this one, ACM, I will, I will have difference in profits, which is A, then I will have stock valuation, stock valuation, under stock valuation, closing stock, 
under the closing stock, uh, we have ACM, absorption costing method, marginal costing method. I will find the difference. I will then pick opening stock. Under opening stock, I will find the difference in ACM and MCM. So, what that, what that means is that my line get to that point. Therefore, I can then say, I'll draw my line down, down, then 2009. Okay. All right then. So, like we the other time we said that the profits in the PBT, the PBT for absorption costing method in two thousand and eight was three fifty seven two fifty one. Sorry, 261 for 2009, 357. Here is 357261. For MCM, marginal costing method, difference, I mean, profit before tax. The profit before tax is uh, 237351. 237237. Three five one. So let's find the difference in profits. Okay. So this will give me three fifty seven minus two thirty seven will give me one twenty thousand. Remember our figures are in thousands. Again, two sixty one. Minus 351, that will give me minus 90. So I found difference in profits. So let's go and determine difference in stock valuation. So I need closing stock. Closing stock. Closing stock in 2008 for ACM. I think we did the working down there. Yes, ACM closing stock 2008, 496, 400. 496.400, closing stock, 496.4. MCM, 2008, closing stock. MCM, 2008, closing stock, 292.4. 292.4. Here is 292.4. What's the difference? Four nine six point four minus two nine two point four equal two four two hundred and four. Okay, so this is difference in closing stock. I need to determine difference in uh in opening stock. So difference in opening stock for ACM. Opening stock, opening stock ACM, we got is up there. Absorption, opening stock is a 204.4. Opening stock for absorption is 204.4. 204.4. I will come here to put 204.4. Then MCM, opening stock 2008. Opening stock 2008 is uh, 120.4. 120.4. Here is 120.4. Therefore, what's the difference? 204.4 minus 120. 
0.4 equal 84. Here is 84. 84 minus 204. 84 minus 204. That gives 120. So 204 minus 84 is 120. So this represents difference in stock. Difference in stock valuation. Number B. All right. Let's go and do for 2009. In 2009, closing stock, ACM. 2009, ACM 277.4. Here is 277.4. Then MCM, marginal costing method, closing stock 2009. 163.4. 163.4. What's the difference? Let's find the difference. 277.4 minus 163.4 equal 114. 114. So let's find the difference in the Opening stock for ACM and the MCM in 2009. So in 2009, opening stock is 204.4 for, sorry, 496.4, 496.4 for ACM, 496.4. Here is four. 96.4. Then our opening stock for MCM will be 292.4. Let's find the difference. 496.4 minus 292.4 equal, that's 204, 204. So 114 minus 204 minus 90. Here is minus 90. Therefore, like I said in the format I produced, I give to you that once the difference in profits is the same thing as difference in stock valuation, it means what you have done is correct. When you look at difference in profits, in 2008, difference in profit is 120,000. Then difference in stock valuation is also 120,000. In 2009, difference in profit is negative 90,000. Different in stock valuation is negative 90,000. So what that means is that what we have done is correct. So at this junction, I need to pause. I need you to ask your questions. Okay? Talk to me. I want to hear from you. Do you have any yes. question for me? Yes, talk to me. Who is speaking? Sir, Sir I have, yes, I have like three questions to ask. Talk but, to me. Um, um, you can uh, mute yourself. Uh, uh, well, the question is that they are Yeah, go ahead, Samuel. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Now, the first, okay. uh, the first one. Can the you first one. Me now, sir. Please. Hello. Who is talking? Is it Michael? Is it Samuel or Nika? Please, if you are not talking, you have to mute yourself. Mute yourself so that you don't distract others. So, who will go first? 
Okay, I'm going for sir. Oh yeah, Samuel, go ahead. You can uh, mute yourself. And the first one is from this reconciliation statement. Okay. Um, do do we and uh, do we have to arrange it ACM coming first and MCM coming second? Or we can rearrange it then yeah. That was number one. You know, from the reconciliation statement, the first uh -huh. one we we dealt with is the absorption costing method. Yeah. Before marginal cost yeah. method. Mm -hmm. So in the situation whereby I rearrange by taking MCM first and ACM second, will I get the same answer? It's That's still going to get the same thing. That's still going to get the same thing. It doesn't matter. Okay. But mostly, right. <laughs> Nika, why are you disrupting now? Mute yourself. So, the, so the second question now is that I want to know the rationale behind um um sales unit and production unit. Sales unit and production unit. You know, when we started, uh, all the production costs, we charge them on production units. But when we get to non-production costs, that is fees, selling, and production, we charge them, we charge them to sales units. So I want to know the rationale behind them. That is it that is is there anything? Why not? Because when we are dealing with I made I was thinking maybe it should be charged on production units, especially the variable. Selling and admin expenses. They want to know the reason why we are charging them on sales units. That's question number two. So number three now is no, no, um, hold on with the question number three. Let's clear the question number two first. Okay, okay, sir. So if I get you correctly, you want to know the reason why we charge variable selling expenses on the unit sold. Why not on unit produced? Is that correct? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. So with the, as the name implies variable selling expenses your variable selling expenses must be based on the number of units sold not unit produced let me explain to you say for example practically say for example you are a marketing executive for an organization for a company and uh, part of your package is that on a monthly basis you are going to hand as a sales director or as a sales executive you are going to hand a monthly salary of five hundred thousand naira. And also, in addition to that, for every sales you are able to generate in the market, you are going to earn a commission of 5%. So what that means is that your salary, your monthly salary of 500,000 Naira is fixed. It will not change. For the whole year of 2000, now, October, or for the whole year, from January to December, you are going to earn 500,000 Naira salary per month until the following year, maybe, if you have a good appraiser, maybe additional percentage will be, will be will be added on your fist on your salary, maybe ten percent. Then what that means is that in the following year you are going to be earning five hundred and fifty thousand for the full for the for, for on a monthly basis for that following year. Now the five percent commission on any sales you are able to generate it means that the the higher the number of uh, the, the higher the sales you are able to generate, the more sales commission you are going to earn. So you can see that one will vary. So say for example, you make a sales in the first in the in the first month, you make a sales of uh, one million error, five percent of four, of one million error, you hand that as your sales commission. In the following month, you make a sales of uh, 120, 1.2 million error, five percent of 1.2 million error. You can see it will be increasing. Any day, say for example, in the third month, you make a sales of eight hundred thousand error. Then 5% of 800,000 error, you can see. So the more sales you are able to generate, the more sales commission you are going to earn. All right, and vice versa. Okay, but the fixed selling expenses will remain constant. It will not change. It will not change. All right, I hope that is clear, Samuel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is clear now. So the last and the last question now is um, you know, you explained something to us that. If we are not given fixed override absorption rate, the calculation will be um budgeted production override all over the budgeted activity level. Mm -hmm. now, it will be your fixed production overhead divided by, by divided by your budgeted yeah. output. Yes. Okay, budgeted output. Okay. Now you know in this question now we are given direct uh, FOR as TV now. Yeah, so in the station where we are not given a clue, I will be I will going to be given the fixed production override in amount in value. Yes, examiner will give to the examiner will examiner will oh. give you. 
You know, I, I, I also demonstrated it for you last time. Your fixed production overhead, if it is not given to you, you can say, okay, uh, your fixed overhead absorption rate multiplied by your budgeted output. That will give you your fixed production overhead. However, if you are given production, fixed production overhead and you are not given fixed overhead absorption rate, then you can then say your fixed production overhead divided by the budgeted output. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, then. So, next question, please. Uh, William, you, you wanted to ask a question the other time. Please talk to me. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sorry for distracting the class. I'm I'm trying to move from my laptop to my phone. Mm. Yeah, the, okay. my first question was, I don't have the uh, question with me. So maybe that's why I am a little bit lost there. Oh, oh. They, 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 hold yeah, on, you, a, could they, have, you could have checked it from the group now. In the WhatsApp group, I you have did, the question there. I did. So, yeah, I did. I communicated to, I don't know, there's this network um, man I'm chatting with. I, mean, I used to send him, so it's not responding. So maybe after yeah. the class, I will call him again. So there's this three Naira fixed production overhead, which is it given in the question? It's given in the question. Your fixed uh, production or fixed manufacturing overhead is three Naira, and it's given in the question. The question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, sir. Secondly, sir. Um, yep. I I want to believe uh, um, the, uh, the variable selling and override I have was a, a non-production cost. We should we should not be added to uh, the I mean there's, you have to separate the uh, direct product cost from the indirect product cost. So I think yeah. that's why you have okay okay I'm I'm, I'm just trying to just to confirm. Sir. Yeah. Every other thing. Your, it's all right. You're yeah, welcome. Any other question, please? Any other question? Yes, sir. Hey, sorry, sorry, sir. And the last one now. You know, uh, yeah. this marginal cost method. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, are you explain something regards the fees manufacturing in a variety? You know yep. that it does not change, like, unlike the absorption costing. You know you repeated yep. this on video, so yep. I, I want you to put more insight on that, sir. I, it, it's, it's, this is what we are saying that when it has to do with marginal costing approach, your fixed production overhead is the cost that has no sympathy for activity level. What I mean is that, irrespective of number of units produced, your fixed manufacturing overhead will not change because it is based on the budgeted output, not on production. And that's why you see that in 2008 and 2009, your fixed production override is constant at 600,000 naira. So until when your budgeted output changes, that's when your fixed production override will also change. All right? Provided your fixed override, uh, provided your budgeted output is constant, then your fixed production override will also be constant for the relevant range. It will not change. But when it has to do with absorption costing method, your fixed production overhead will vary depending on the activity level. Meaning that the more number of units that are, that, that are produced, the more fixed production overhead that will be incurred and vice versa. Please, again, don't make the mistake by thinking that because your fixed production overhead is changing, varies under absorption costing method, then under marginal costing method, it should also vary. No, please note that because under marginal costing method, your fixed production overhead is constant, irrespective of the activity level. It doesn't change. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Yes. Any other question, please? So, if there are no other question, uh, let me run you through the second illustration that I'm going to send to you on the group, the assignments you are going to prepare and the submit. Today is a Monday, but on, not later than uh, Thursday before your class, before your PM class on Thursday, you must submit the assignments. So I will present the assignments in, the, uh, in our group on WhatsApp, okay? So that you can quickly go through it and submit uh, before the due date. All right then. So let me quickly, we have about uh, 35 minutes more. 
So let me run you through the solution you have in the uh, in the note so that uh, we can complete operating statements in our next class we are going to move to relevant course for decision making all right so i uh, will stop sharing this and um, switch to the notes I believe you can see my screen, right? For the notes. Can you see yes, my sir. screen? Okay, then. Yes. So let's go to the illustration number two. Now, the illustration number two is on Panama. Panama Limited makes and sells two products. Sorry, makes and sells one product, which has the following standard uh, production cost. Normal output is 16,000 units per annum. Variable selling distribution and administrative uh, costs are 20% of sales value. Fixed selling distribution and administration costs are 180,000 naira per annum. There are no units in, fixed, in finished goods inventory on 1st October 2021. The fixed provided expenditure is spread evenly throughout the year. The selling price per unit is 140 Naira. Production and sales budget are shown in the table below. Period ending March 2022. Period ending September 2022. Required. Prepared operating statement for each of the six monthly periods using A, marginal costing technique, B, absorption costing technique. You see? You have to be very careful with this kind of a question. When you when you are faced with this kind of a question on the day of your exam, you have to be very careful because uh, the question may look very small, but if you don't understand the principle, if you don't understand the, the requirement or the dictate of the question, you may likely commit a very costly mistake. And therefore, uh, when you are faced with this kind of a question, you take your time, you take your time to digest this to know the kind of ingredients you'll be looking for in the question. It's the same format. The same format as the first question that we solved is the same thing we're going to do in this one. Therefore, but the only difference is that this question is, is for one year only, but the one year is divided into two six monthly period. So period ending March, then period ending September. The period that ended in March 2022 might have started on the 1st of October 2021. The period that ended in September 2022 might have started from 1st of April 2022. Therefore, now, the only uh, dynamics in this question is, is just the fact that the budgeted output given to you of 16,000. Examiner has told you that normal output is 16,000 units per annum. And you know that the period you are given in this question is six months, six monthly period ending March and September. So what that means is that the normal output of 16,000, when you want to determine your fixed production overhead under marginal costing approach or technique, this 16,000 unit must be divided into two. That is six over 12 multiplied by 16,000, which means 8,000 for March, 8,000 for September, before you now multiply with the fixed overhead absorption uh, rates, okay? So the same thing, you are told in the question that fixed selling distribution and administration costs are 180,000 Naira per annum. So what that means is that because it's, a, it's, it's per annum and the period given in the question is for six months. So what that means is that you need to do six over 12 multiplied by uh, 180,000, which is 90,000 error for March, 90,000 error for September. But because students is, uh, are so eager, an average student, because you are so eager and that you want to complete, you want to solve the code, this question is very simple, straightforward. 
if you don't pay particular attention to the dictate of the question, you are going to commit avoidable mistake because some student may be picking 180,000 error for each of the period for September, 180,000 error for March. Meanwhile, they wanted 180,000 error is for one year and you cannot account for one year for March and September. So you have to divide it into two. So that's what examiner has eating in this question. So uh, that's for that. Then let's uh, let's go through the, the solution because if I want to be solving it one by one, we won't finish it today. We have less than 30 minutes. So let me just run you through the solution we have here. Now, so to solve the question for Panama, is the same procedure, the same formats as with the question we just solved under Fernandez. The first thing first is for you to determine your sales value. How do I get my sales value? I will go to the question, what's the number of units sold in March? I will go to the question, what's the unit sold in March? Let's go back. In March, uh, we are told that sales in March is 7,000 units. Therefore, what's the selling price? Selling price is 140 is naira. 140 naira multiplied by 7,000 units. So the calculator will give you, uh, uh, we give you, let me go back there, 980,000. That's how we arrive at this 980,000. Then after that, we move to our production cost. Under production cost, the first item is opening stock. Therefore, in 2000, and in, in March, 2022 was the closest was the opening stock. Let's go back to the question and check. We are not given opening stock. Examiner did not give. We are, we are told in the question that there are no units in finished goods inventory on one October 2021. So there is no opening stock, and that's why you see that. Under production cost, opening stock is dash. Nothing is there because we don't have opening stock. There is no opening stock on 1st of October 2021. Then the next item would be direct material cost. To get the direct material cost, I need to go back to the question, what's the actual unit produced in March? So in, in March, the unit produced was uh, 8,000. 500 multiplied by material cost per unit. Material cost per unit is 28 naira. So when you multiply 28 naira by 8,500 units, so you should have the answer. Uh, you should have the answer you have, you have there, which is um, uh, 238,000, 238,000, okay? Then direct labor cost as well. To get the direct labor cost, you need to multiply the number of unit produced of 8,500, you multiply with the uh, labor cost per unit. And the labor cost per unit, according to the question, is uh, 16, is 18 naira. So 18 naira multiplied by 8,500 units, uh, that should give us the answer we have there, which is, um, excuse me, which is 153,000 naira. Then the next item is the fixed, is the variable production overhead because we are using marginal costing technique, okay, as the first requirement. So the fixed production overhead will be equal to the 8,500 units produced in, in March multiplied by the fixed production overhead per unit, which is what, uh, which is three naira, Three naira multiplied by eight thousand five hundred units. So that's what gave us that twenty five thousand five hundred naira. So you now had everything together. You had it together uh, to get four hundred and sixteen thousand five hundred. So you need to go and do. You need to go and calculate your closing stock. So you need to go. And, let's go and check the workings for closing stock. So to get the closing stock. In, in March, since there is no opening stock in March, but the actual unit produced in March was 8,500 plus nothing, that's 8,500. The unit sold in March was 7,000 units. When you less, you have 1,500 closing stock, 
So that 1,500 units, you must multiply with total variable cost per unit because using marginal costing approach, using marginal costing approach, stocks are valued at total variable cost per unit. Therefore, under marginal costing in March, in March, under marginal costing, the 1,500 units unsold multiplied by 40, 49 error. The total variable cost per unit, according to the question, the total variable cost per unit is 49 naira. Let's check together. So when you add up all these three line items, that will give you your total variable cost per unit. 18 plus 28, that's, um, that's 46. 46 plus 3, that's 49. So, and that's why you see that the closing stock is multiplied by uh, 49 naira per units okay let's multiply with 49 error per units let me go back there uh yes this is it so you multiply the 1500 closing stock in units with the 49 era to arrive at 73500 so when you go back there under marginal costing approach see 49000 uh 73500 this is the closing stock. So when you're less, you have cost of goods uh, sold or your cost of sales, then you need to add variable non-production cost. According to the question, let's go back. We are told that the variable non-production cost or variable selling distribution and administration cost is 20% of the sales. Variable selling distribution and administration costs are 20% of sales value. So what I miss is that I will go back to the question, I mean to the solution I have done for my sales value. I will multiply 20% on that. You know, the first one we solved under Fernandez, your fixed, your variable selling expenses was based on the, it was, we were given 50 cover per unit. But in this other one, examiner told us that your variable selling distribution and admin expenses must be based on the sales value, must be based on the sales value. Therefore, when you look at, when you look at the sales value here, the sales value in March is uh, 980,000. So 20% of 980,000 will give us 196,000. So you are going to add your fixed, your variable non-production cost. When you had 196, Plus 343, you have 590, uh, 539. So that 539 minus 980 will give you 441,000. That 441,000 represents contribution. So that's the contribution margin. Then remember that your uh, period cost will be written off fully from the aggregate contribution. Therefore, to get the period cost, you are going to pick the fixed production overhead. How do I determine my fixed production overhead? Examiner has told me in the question that, let's go back to the question. The fixed production overhead, you are told, remember we are using marginal costing technique. Therefore, your fixed production overhead must be based on the budgeted output. So in this question, the budgeted output is 16,000 units per annum. So to get the one attributable to match, I'm going to say six over 12, six months divided by 12 months in a year, then multiply by the 16,000 units, that will give me 88,000 units. So that 8,000 units, I'm going to multiply with the fixed overhead absorption rate of 20 Naira. That is 8,000 units multiplied by 20 Naira. That will give me 160,000 Naira. So that is how we arrive at the 160,000 Naira in the, in the solution table, okay? This is the 160,000 error for a fixed production overhead. I think I did the working down there too. Let's go and check so that when you're on your own, you'll be able to go through it. So look at it. Fixed production overhead. The fixed production overhead will be calculated for a year and multiplied by 50%, blah, blah, blah. So for the month of March, 16,000 units multiplied by 20 naira, then multiply by 6 over 12. Because the period ending in March, is for three, is for six months. That is from October to March is six months. Again, the period ending in September is for six months. From first of April to thirtieth of September is a period of six months, and that's why you are seeing that one sixty thousand error there. 
constant for the two period using uh marginal costing technique. Okay, so that's how we arrive at this one sixty thousand. You are saying that. Then after that, also in the question, you are give you are given fixed selling distribution and administration cost. We are told that that the fixed selling distribution and administration cost is one eighty thousand naira per annum. Um, let's go back to the question. Fixed. Um, let's see. Yes. Fixed selling distribution and administration cost are 180,000 naira per annum. Because the period ending March is for six months. The period ending March ending uh, in September is for six months. Therefore, this 180,000 naira, which is meant for the whole year, you need to divide it by six over 12. That's how we arrive at the 90,000 naira you are seeing there. Okay. Um, let's go back there. So that's how we arrive at this 90,000 naira. So 90 plus 160 will give you 260. 260 minus 441, you have 191. In the question, there is no income tax. You are not given tax rates. Since you are not given tax rates, then your profit before tax will be the same thing as your net profit. So that is how we arrive at the 191 for the period of uh, uh, March 2022. So let's go to 2000 and, uh, I mean 2022 September. In September also, you need to determine how many units were sold. So go back to the question. In September, yes, in September, 8,000 units were sold. So this 8,000 you multiply with 140 naira of your selling price. That's how we arrive at the sales value for 2000 and uh, uh, for September 2022, which is uh, 1 million 120,000. Then, of course, you determine your opening stock. In March, the closing stock was um, 73,500 naira. So, as you are coming as on the 1st of April 2022, this closing stock at the end of the 31st of March 2022 will become opening stock. That's why you see this one as the opening stock there. What you have here is what has become opening stock in September and 1st of April. Then you determine your material cost also. You multiply the material cost by unit with the unit produced in September. In September, material uh, the unit produced was the, yes, unit produced was 7,000 in September. And material cost per unit is 18 naira. Sorry, is a 28 naira. So 28 multiplied by uh, units produced of 7,000. That's how we arrive at that material cost per unit. Okay. That's how we arrive at the material cost per unit of 196,000 naira. The same thing applied to uh, labor. Labor is units produced of 7,000 multiplied by. by uh, 18 naira or thereabouts. So we got this one 26. The same thing with fixed production, sorry, variable production overhead. The variable production overhead per unit multiplied by 7,000 units produced. So we have 21,000. When you had it up, that gave us 416,500. Then you need to go and do your stock valuation, closing stock. I will then go back to my workings. I need to go and determine in September 2022, was my closing stock in units. So to get the closing stock in units in September, the opening stock that you have here, the closing stock that you have at the end of September, as you get to 1st of April 2022, it will become opening stock. So in 2020, in September, the actual unit produced was 7,000. When you had up, that's 8,500. Therefore, in that September, 8,000 units were sold. So 8,000 minus 8,500 will give us 500 units on sold. So that 500 units multiplied by 49 naira will give us the closing stock. And that's how you arrive at this. Uh, in, that's how you arrive at 224,500, okay, of a closing stock. So, um, yep. So that's how you arrive at this 24,500. Then after that, of course, you have your cost of goods sold. So you need to consider um, 
you need to consider variable non-production cost. You consider variable non-production cost because examiner has told you that your variable selling distribution and admin cost are 20, 20% of the sales value. And the sales value in September is 1 million. 120,000. So 20% of that will give us 224,000. That's how we arrive at this 224,000. Then 392,000 plus 224,000 will give us, will give us 616,000. Less 1120, we have 504,000 contribution. Then you now less period cost. Remember what I said, we are using marginal costing technique. Your period cost, your Fixed production overhead will remain the same, constant, irrespective of activity level, it will not change because it is based on the projected output. And that's why you see that in September as well, your fixed production overhead is constant at 160,000 naira. Then the fixed selling distribution and admin expenses, we are told it's 180,000 naira per annum. So period ending in September is a period of six months. So six over 12 multiplied by 180, we give me the 90,000. 90,000 plus 160, we give me 250,000. 250,000 minus 544, we give me 254. That completes the marginal costing approach. They will now move to absorption costing technique. So under the absorption costing technique, the selling, the sales value for the for March and September is the same thing as the marginal costing technique. However, production costs uh, it will be slightly different. The way we compose the production cost will be slightly different from marginal costing approach. First thing first, you need to consider is the opening stock. We are told in this question, on 1st of October 2021, there was no opening stock of finished goods. Therefore, you put a dash. Then you move ahead and determine the material cost. The material cost will be the same thing as computed under marginal costing technique. Just repeat whatever you have as your material cost, direct labor cost, and variable production overhead is the same thing so, because it's based on the uh, activity level. However, using absorption costing technique, you have to include your fixed production overhead as part of your production cost. Okay, what's the fixed production overhead? The fixed production overhead per unit, according to the question, we are told is a 20 naira. Let me confirm that. Fixed production overhead is a, yes, it's 20 naira. That's your fixed production overhead, 20 naira. So multiply by the unit produced in, in March. The unit produced in March is 8,500. So 8,500 multiplied by 20 naira will give you 170,000 naira. So that's how we arrive at that 170,000 error there. Let me scroll down. Yeah, so that's how we arrive at this 170,000. When you add up everything, so you have your cost of goods available for sale, which is your COGAS. Immediately after the COGAS, you need to account for closing stock. I will then go and do my working, okay, for closing stock. I will go and do my working for closing stock. I've calculated in September, sorry, in March, that closing stock is 1,500 units. I need to multiply that with total cost per unit. Total cost per unit is 69 area. So 69 multiplied by 1,5 will give me 103,500. Uh, so that's how we arrive at that 103,500 you are seeing here. So when you less from the core gas, you are going to have cost of goods sold, okay? Now, when you get to immediately after the cost of goods, so you need to account for overhead assumption. You need to account for overhead assumption. Therefore, you go and do your working for overhead assumption. You want to know whether there will be over or under assumption. So to do that, you are going to pick the budgeted output. According to the question, the budgeted output for 2000 and, uh, for, the, for the period under consideration is 16,000 units. The budgeted output is 16,000 units. And the period ending in September is for a period of six months. Therefore, six over 12 multiplied by 16,000 will give me 8,000 units. That's how we arrive at this 8,000 units here. Yeah? The same thing in September, the balance of the 16,000 will go to September. So in, in, in March, how many units were produced? In March, 8,500 units were produced. Okay, 
In September, 7,000 units were produced. So 8,000 minus 8,500 will give me minus 500. In September, 8,000 minus 7,000 will give me 1,000 units. Therefore, in the month of March, in the period ending March, there is under absorption. Because once your budgeted output is less than the actual output, it is under absorption. If it is under absorption, it is you are going to deduct from your cost of goods. So that's why you see under, I put under as a bracket. Okay. But once your budgeted output or your budgeted overhead is greater than the actual overhead or output, it is over absorption. If it is over absorption, you are going to add to the cost of goods sold. Okay, you are going to add to the cost of goods sold. So you still have the formula I gave earlier on, or the one I gave last week is still the same thing here. So in March, we have under absorption of 10,000. In September, we have over absorption of 20,000. So you need to go and adjust for that under you the uh, cost of goods sold. Okay, under the cost of goods sold. And then that's why you are seeing 10,000 Naira here under absorption in, in, in March. So the difference is 473,000. So that 473,000 minus the sales value of 980 will give me 507,000, all right, which represent the gross profit. Then I need to consider non-production cost. Under non-production, the non-production cost could be variable or fixed. Whatever the examiner gives to you is what you are going to use. So in March, we have variable selling and distribution, uh, variable selling distribution and admin cost of 196,000 Naira. Okay, of 196,000 Naira. Let's go and confirm that figure. Variable selling distribution and admin expenses. Let's see what the examiner has told us there. Yes, you are told that variable selling distribution and admin expenses are 20% of the sales value. You know, we determine that under marginal costing technique. So it's the same thing as 186,000. Okay, it's the same thing as the 186,000. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Yeah, so we've determined it before. This 186,000 is 20% of the sales value of uh, 980,000. Okay, that's how we arrive at that 186,000. So the 186,000 you are seeing there. Then the fixed selling expenses is the 50% of the uh, fixed selling expenses in cure for per annum. So 50% of 180,000 will give us 90,000. So total is 286. 286 minus 547, you have 221. Okay, so that completes the uh, the net profit for uh, for the period of March. They will now move to September. The same sales value in September is the same value you have in the MCT is what you have in ACT. Then again, the closing stock in March of 103, 500 Naira will become opening stock in September. Then just go to your MCT, marginal costing technique. What do you have as direct material cost, direct labor cost, and variable overhead? When you look at what you have here, 196, 126, 21,000, just repeat the same thing, and that's what you have here. That's what you have there. Then you need to determine your fixed production overhead. Your fixed production overhead under absorption costing technique is based on the budgeted output. Therefore, the budgeted output, sorry, yes, is based on the actual output. The actual output in September was uh, 7,000 units. 7,000 units multiplied by 20 naira of a fixed overhead assumption rate. That's how we arrive at the 140,000, okay? 140,000. Then, of course, you add up everything. Then you have uh, 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 the COGAS, uh, COGAS of uh, 586,500. Then you're going to do your working, uh, you're going to do working for the closing stock in September. Closing stock in September is a uh, 500 units, 500 units multiplied by 69 error. That's what produced the 34,500 you are seeing there. Okay, that's what produced the 34,500, the 34,500 you are seeing there. So when you adjust for your cogas, you have your cost of goods sold. After your cost of goods sold, you need to go and 
compute the your overabsorption. We've already done the calculation previously. The overabsorption is twenty thousand naira. This is the twenty thousand naira for overabsorption you have here because budgeted output budgeted output was greater than the uh, actual output that resulted in a uh, overabsorption. If it is overabsorption, you are going to add it, and that's why you see that we added the twenty thousand naira to the cost of goods sold. You can see whether it is under or over absorption, you are supposed to make adjustments on the cost of goods sold. You have to adjust on the cost of goods sold. So when you had the 552 plus 20,000, you have 572. So 572 minus 1120, that is what produced the 548,000. So that 548,000, you need to uh, deduct the non-production cost, the non-production cost. The non-production cost in September is 20% of the sales value, 20% of 1120. That's what produced the 224. Again, uh, the fixed selling distribution and admin cost is 50% of 180,000. That's why you see this 90,000 there. When you had it up, that's 314. 314 minus 548, you have 234. So that completed the absorption costing technique for March and September. Even though in the question, examiner did not ask you to prepare the reconciliation statement, but it is implied, it is implied, you need to give yourself that self-assurance that what you have done is correct, or you are going extra mile to demonstrate to the examiner that you know what you are doing. So at all times, if examiner did not ask you in a question to prepare the reconciliation statement, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. That extra effort you are putting will also give you extra reward. So it's important, all right? Because it's not at all time the examiner will ask you to do reconciliation statement or variance analysis. But whenever you prepare income statement or operating statement, always ensure that you present your reconciliation statement. So to do the reconciliation statement, I need to go back. I will pick my profit before tax for absorption costing technique and marginal costing technique. So under marginal costing technique, the profit we have in March was 221,000 uh, 221, naira. 221, that's 221,000 you are seeing there. Okay, then under MCT is 191,000. Under MCT is 191,000. So the difference is 30,000 naira for, for March. I will then go to stock valuation. Under stock valuation, uh, absorption costing, closing stock for assumption costing is 103,500. Under marginal cost, closing stock is 73. When you less the difference, you have 30. So you need to go and do for opening stock as well. Difference in opening stock. Under absorption costing technique, opening stock is nil. We don't have anything. Under marginal cost, opening stock is also nil. Therefore, 30,000 minus nothing will give me 30,000. So you can see difference in profits and difference in stock valuation are equal. What that means is that in, in, in March, our uh, analysis, what we have done, our calculation is correct because for difference in profits and difference in stock valuation ties. Then you go to September. In September, what is the profit before tax under ACM? Under ACM, profit before tax is 264. Sorry, 234. That's how you see the, that's why you have that number there. Under MCT, marginal costing technique, September profit before tax is uh, 254 as well. 254. So 234 minus 254 will give me minus 20. That's how you have that number. Then we find different in stock valuation, difference in closing stock, 34,500 in September for. ACT, 24,500 for MCT, difference of 10,000 Naira. Then I will then go and do difference in stock valuation. In September, the closing stock, uh, the opening stock under absorption costing is uh, 103,500. The closing stock, the opening stock under marginal costing is 73, difference of 30,000, difference of 30,000. So 10,000 Naira minus 30,000 Naira will give me minus 20,000 Naira. You can see 
Difference in profits and difference in stock valuation are also tied in September. That concludes the question. So please go ahead, make sure you go through the uh, the question and the solution we provide, uh, we provided in this template and what we have, what we have done today. And uh, like I explained to you, uh, and tomorrow by the grace of God, I will send to you the, the assignments which must be submitted not later than Thursday. Whoever that does, uh, whoever does not submit the assignments will not benefit from the solution. And I will not mark, I will only mark for those people that submit. All right then. So please ask me a question so that we can close for the day. It's already 11 o'clock. I want to hear from you, please. Any question for me? Any question? Some of you have left. Uh, I can I still have uh, Anthony Chidima. Uh, I don't know, that's not your name. Deb PC. I have Emmanuel Wanko. I have Esther. I have Funke. I have Gabriel. I have Grace. I have Adikola. Uh, that's another person using Samsung uh, SM. Then uh, I also have Samuel. I have uh, Inka. So, okay. Any question for me before we say good night? Okay. So, in the absence of no question, I think uh, we have to call it a day. Uh, We'll see you again uh, next week, Monday, by the grace of God. However, Mr. Shuaju will be taking you PM on Thursday. So be punctual in class. And uh, good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, Funke. Yes, sir.